Welcome back. In this video, we're going to review similar triangles. We're going to begin by rewinding the clock and going back to congruent triangles. You might remember from geometry that congruent in congruent triangles, all the corresponding sides and all the corresponding angles are congruent. And we denote this by tick marks. So if we had a couple of triangles, triangle ABC and triangle XYZ, we could indicate the congruent parts by using tick marks. So with one tick mark, I know that side AB is congruent to side XY. I know angle B is congruent to angle Y, and I might just do a, a double hash mark here, and I'd say angle A is congruent to angle X. I can tell by the tick marks that those two correspond. And in fact, going back to geometry, I've got two angles and a side between that, so those two triangles are congruent by angle side angle. And then, of course, once the triangles are congruent, then all the remaining corresponding parts are congruent. So we might say BC is congruent to YZ, and AC is congruent to XZ, and angle C is congruent to angle Z. So here order matters. Triangle ABC is congruent to some particular triangle. Well, we need to line up angle A with its corresponding congruent angle, and that is angle X. Angle B lines up with angle Y, and angle C lines up with angle Z. So correspondence in the written form is very important for us. It tells us what angles are corresponding. It also tells us what sides. We know side XY has to correspond to side AB and side AC has to correspond to side XZ. So order really matters in congruent in the labeling of congruent triangles. And we can prove triangles congruent by side side side, side angle side, angle side angle, um, not side side side, and I also missed um, angle angle side here. But not side side angle, okay, that gives us an ambiguous case. Also missed HL, which is a version of side side angle. Similar triangles, on the other hand, are triangles that have the same shape, just like congruent ones, but are not the same size, okay? And the corresponding angles are all congruent, but the corresponding sides are obviously not if the sizes are different. So, but the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides are equal, or the corresponding sides are proportional. So, if we had two similar triangles, okay, um, a smaller triangle and a larger triangle, say, and I'll call that one triangle ABC and triangle XYZ and I'll put in some tick marks so these two triangles are similar by angle angle that's all we really need to prove two triangles are similar but the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides must be equal or the corresponding sides are proportional. So let's say this side AC was 2 and side XY was 3. Well, angle B corresponds to angle Z, so the ratio of the sides is 2 to 3, so if side BC is 4, then 
let's see, make sure I have my correct correspondence, then side ZY must be 6, also in the ratio of 2 to 3. Given the similar triangles, calculate the measure of the corresponding angles. Well, we have two triangles here, triangle ABC and triangle IJH. And we can tell by the tick marks what the corresponding sides are. Now we know that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle has to equal 180 degrees. So we can find the measure of angle A by simply subtracting 53 and 29 from 180, which is 70, 82 degrees. So angle A must be 98, if my arithmetic is correct. So now we know then that the corresponding angles must be congruent. So we know that angle I is 98. We know that angle H is 29. And we know that angle J is 53. So even though they're not in the same position on the diagrams, we have to go by the tick marks. So follow the tick marks. So given these two similar triangles, now we're asked to calculate the length of the corresponding sides. So again, we have to look at the tick marks to see which sides correspond. Okay, PQ corresponds to side AB. So we wouldn't say 8 is to 8. Okay, and QR corresponds to side BC. So as it turns out, PR is to AC as, and now we can pick our other sides, as PQ, say, PQ corresponds to AB. So we could rewrite that 12 is to 8 as 8 is to side AB. Well, we can reduce 12 is to 8. We can reduce that by a factor of 4. That's 3 is to 2 as 8 is to AB. And we see by cross multiplying, because it's a proportion, we can just cross multiply and we get 3AB equals 8 times 2, and then AB is equal to 16 thirds. So now we know side AB is 16 thirds. You know, and I'll leave CB to you. I can help you get that started though, and you can use the same ratio, 12 is to 8 as, well, the corresponding side is to the other corresponding side. Set up your proportion, cross multiply, and solve. And finally, using similar triangles, we can calculate the height or length of something. A lot of times we'll see this as a shadow problem. So let's say we have a 10 meter high statue that casts an 18 meter shadow. At the same time, a 99-foot high flagpole casts how long of a shadow? Well, we always find shadows on the ground. So, if we have a 99-foot flagpole, how long is its shadow? Let's say X compared to a 10 meter high statue with an 18 meter shadow. Well, even though we don't have the same units, that's going to work out okay. We can say 10 is to 18 as 99 is to X, or height is to shadow, as height 
is to shadow. So we have to make sure we set this up correctly. You know, we could do height is to height. We could say 99 is to 10, and sure enough, or 10 is to 99, as 18 is to x. That's fine as well. Well, 10 over 18, that can be reduced by a factor of 2. So 5 is to 9, as 99 is to x. And 5x equals 99 times 9. Divide both sides by 5. And we get our answer of 178. Point two. I did my calculation right there. So there are some samples of similar triangles, and we will see you in class.